Great white sharks are the ocean's largest macro predatory fish and an icon of pop culture. From Shark Week to Hollywood thrillers like The Reef, The Shallows, and Jaws, all have one thing in common. The sharks are massive. In reality, the average male great white is 11 to 13 feet long. Female white sharks are even bigger and can reach 15 to 16 feet. According to renowned ichthyologist Dr. John E. Randall, who we are going to talk about a lot in this video, the largest white shark accurately measured and verified was caught off Ledge Point, Australia in March of 1984, and it was 19 and a half feet in length. The shark in the movie The Shallows was a 23-footer, and the shark in Jaws, named Bruce, was famously 25 feet, and the shark in Jaws 3 was comically 35 feet long. But maybe I shouldn't laugh. After all, Discovery Channel aired a documentary called Shark of Darkness about a legendary 35-foot great white shark that terrorized South Africa in the 70s. And the Guinness Book of World Records listed two sharks measuring 36 to 37 feet long. One was caught near Port Ferry, Australia in 1870, and the other was trapped in New Brunswick, Canada in the 1930s. But can we trust these measurements, or are they a little fishy? After all, a survey of more than 500 anglers found that 53% of them exaggerate the size of their catch. I'm KP, your friendly neighborhood marine biologist. The maximum size of a white shark is a tricky thing to investigate. For one, there are different ways to measure a shark. Researchers typically measure a shark with the caudal fin in its natural position, while fishermen prefer to measure the shark with its caudal fin in a more stretched out flat position. While some don't even measure the caudal fin at all, and most of these monster sharks were disposed of before they could be authenticated. Which is a problem because sharks don't have bones that can be preserved. So how do we verify these numbers? And the answer is math. And teeth. And this is pretty cool, even though I hate math. With jaws and teeth, researchers can use regression equations to predict a shark's total length based on known body morphometrics. Morphometrics is the analysis of size and form, and regression equations are used to find relationships between data sets, which in this case are body proportions. A great example of morphometrics and regression equations is Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man. In part, the text reads, the length of outspread arms is equal to the height of the man, and the distance from the elbow to the armpit is one eighth of the height. So if we know the length of a person's humerus, we can calculate their height within a narrow range of probabilities. For great white sharks, the crown height of the first upper anterior tooth and the curvature of the upper jaw above the tooth row, called the dried upper jaw perimeter, can be used to accurately estimate the total length with these formulas developed by Dr. J. E. Randall. Dried upper jaw perimeter. This is the basis for the scene in Jaws where Hooper uses the bite radius to determine the tiger shark was not responsible for the attacks. With this formula, Dr. Randall examined the jaws and teeth of one of the sharks in the Guinness Book of World Records, the Port Ferry shark caught in 1870 that allegedly measured a terrifying 36 feet in length. Randall found the size of the Port Ferry shark was grossly exaggerated by about 20 feet. The shark was not 36 feet, it was on the order of 17 feet. And the other 37-footer in the Guinness Book of World Records, the one caught off New Brunswick, Canada in the 1930s, that was a misidentified basking shark, which has a similar body shape. I wonder how much other is in the Guinness Book of World Records. The largest great white shark with fully documented and complete morphometrics was caught off Set, France, in October 13th of 1956. A model of this shark is currently displayed at the Museum of Zoology in Switzerland and is a bit silly. <laughs> the mold was cast from the actual specimen and it contains the original jaws, teeth, and fins. Inside the stomach of this 19.1 foot female were the remains of not one, but two six foot long dolphins. Who needs two dolphins in a day? That's just greedy, I feel. Maybe you've noticed a recurring theme. All of these monster sharks were caught before 1990. Today, it's rare to see 18 or 19 foot long great whites because humans like to kill sharks before they get that big via sport fishing, commercial fishing, and bycatch. This has a profoundly harmful impact on the health of our oceans. Without sharks, entire marine ecosystems can fall out of balance, which is why white sharks were officially listed as a protected species by the Environmental Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act in the 90s. 
Today, the only ethical and sustainable way to fish for great white sharks is through games, like the sponsor of this video, the downloadable fish simulator, Fish and Clash. This game is so easy to pick up and play. I just downloaded it and I'm already having fun fishing. Mega multiplayer. I got a shark straight off the rip. I don't know, a nosy shark. The real world locations are beautiful. I love that the game is educational. I'm reeling in fish species from around the world and learning something about them and their habitats. But my personal favorite part is the way that they promote sustainability and conservation through in-game events. These events helped plant over 1,000 trees. And to celebrate World Water Day, their players collected millions of points catching two extinct fish, and that was turned into 60,000 real-world dollars that helped rid our oceans of ghost nets through a donation to healthy seas. And regular viewers to my channel know how important getting rid of ghost nets and preventing animal entanglements is to me personally. Download Fishing Clash using my link in the descriptions and pinned comment or scan the QR code displayed on the screen. Use my special gift code, Passionate, to claim a $20 reward and a unique avatar for free. And maybe you'll reel in the legendary Great White Shark, like the one caught off the village of Kojimar, Cuba, in 1945. Nicknamed El Monstruo, this shark allegedly measured 21 feet and had a liver that weighed 1,000 pounds. But that is too small for a shark this size. So Dr. Randall used this photo of a man leaning over El Monstruo and compared the relative height of the people to those in this photo of a verified 16-foot shark caught off Okinawa and concluded the Okinawa shark was larger. I don't understand why they're exaggerating so hard. Like, just just add like a foot or two. Like, and it's then it's still impressive and believable. A length of 16 feet was later confirmed by morphometric calculations using El Monstruo's largest tooth. Unfortunately, this tooth was misplaced and lost, and some think it's now gathering dust in a museum vault in Washington. After years of thoroughly debunking record-breaking Great Whites, Dr. Randall stated in 1987 that Although it is probable that great white sharks can exceed a length of 20 feet, irrefutable evidence of such a length has yet to be presented. However, that same year, two white sharks were captured that would put that statement to the test. One was caught in a gill net off Kangaroo Island, Australia, and the other on a steel line south of Malta. These specimens have been named Kanga and Malta, respectively. Let's start with Malta. This pregnant female was originally reported to be 23 feet, 8 inches, and 3 tons. But this came under scrutiny thanks to inconsistent statements from the people who caught the shark. How long was this shark? 23 feet long. 23 feet. And I measured it accurately at 23 feet, 5 inches. Photographs of the shark were also suspicious, with researchers noting that the height of the dorsal fin was significantly shorter than would be expected for a shark that size. The jaws and the first upper anterior tooth were also smaller than expected. And two eyewitnesses came forward and testified that Malta was not nearly as big as originally claimed. Imagine that you, your buddies sell you out like that. That's tough. Years later, the man who caught Malta admitted that they never really measured the shark, but estimated its length based on the size of the truck used to haul it away. Morphometric calculations of the jaws and teeth, the small size of the dorsal fin, and eyewitness testimonies led to a consensus that Malta was not 23 feet in length, but probably closer to 18. Again, I don't understand. Just, just fib a little, just exaggerate a little. Like the best, the best lies contain a bit of truth, you know? Now, Kanga is a different story. This was a massive shark that has a plausible claim to the title of largest ever recorded. Caught in the gillnet off Kangaroo Island, Kanga was estimated to be 23 feet long based on comparisons to the length of the fishing boat, but it was too large to be brought aboard, so it couldn't be accurately measured. Scientists never reached a consensus about the shark's length, largely because it had weird dentition. The shark's teeth were remarkably small compared to the large size of the jaws, and the shape of the teeth were also strange, being spindle-shaped rather than broadly triangular. Calculations using the jaw perimeter and the tooth height produced two completely different estimates. Kanga had been reliably measured from the anterior tip of the nose to the first gill slit, but when scaled up, that yielded a length of just over 19 feet. 
That measurement combined with the morphometric average suggests the actual length of Kanga was around 19 and a half feet, which is very similar to the ledge point shark and likely represents the upper size limit for white sharks. Now there is a caveat here and it's that most researchers agree the initial reported length of 23 feet is unlikely, but cannot be ruled out thanks to the unusual morphometrics. And there are at least two other sharks that were allegedly even bigger. In May 1978, a giant great white was caught after it swam into the harbor of Sao Miguel and was named the Azores Giant. Gerald Wood of Guinness World Records claimed that the shark measured an astonishing 29 and a half feet long. But the only evidence ever provided was this single photograph. Allegedly, the teeth and jaws were sold to someone on another island. Since teeth were the only way to verify the giant's size, Randall sent a colleague to the Azores to track them down. His colleague wrote, I have been to three islands and called several others. I've been to the museum, newspaper offices, harbor docks, bars. I even offered a cash reward to anyone who could provide a tooth. I came back empty handed. They even ran an ad in the newspaper requesting information on large white sharks. No one came forward. Randall compared the height of the people in this photograph of the Azores giant to the people with the Okinawa shark and El Monstruo and found it obvious that the Azores shark was nowhere near 20 feet long. Which brings me to Submarine, the legendary 30-foot white shark that terrorized the shores of South Africa in the 70s and was featured in the Discovery Channel's documentary, Shark of Darkness. Unfortunately, Submarine is an urban legend started by journalists who wanted to see how easy it would be to fool the average reader. Unfortunately, quite simple. Shark of Darkness presented this hoax as fact and offered computer-generated images and interviewed fake experts with fake names about a fake shark. They did, however, include a misleading disclaimer that the show was fictionalized, but many believe Submarine exists to this day. Discovery received a lot of criticism for this, as well as their documentary Megalodon, The Monster Shark Lives, which I debunked in this video right up here. And aren't there theories and even evidence that a few Megalodons still survived to this day? No, there's not. But why does this matter? Am I just a cranky marine biologist who hates fun? Maybe. Science Karen would have been a great name for the channel. Is it really that big of a deal if people believe in 23 or even 30 foot sharks roaming the waters? For one, misinformation is misinformation and it can do real life harm. In the case of Submarine, the show claimed this fictional shark was responsible for a real life tragedy where a boat capsized and two people lost their lives. In reality, this boat was capsized by a heavy swell in the middle of the day and had nothing to do with the shark. Strong winds and rough seas then toppled the boat, sending the 35 passengers and four crew members overboard. Those are real people and real families whose tragedy has now been fictionalized to sell this story. These urban legends also contribute to the negative public opinion about sharks. Sharks are crucially important to the health of our oceans. Here's a real life example. False Bay, South Africa used to be known for a large population of white sharks. Then in 2015, two orcas named Port and Starbird showed up and they started eating the great whites. The sharks responded by fleeing for safer waters. This has serious environmental implications. White sharks influence the structure and function of the False Bay ecosystem. The sharks not only prey on Cape fur seals, but they influence their behavior. Without white sharks around, the seals are bolder more effective predators and have increased pressure on the sardines and anchovies which African penguins rely on for food. The seals have also started attacking penguins directly. African penguins are critically endangered and are expected to go extinct this decade. The decline of white sharks has made conservation efforts that much more important, which is just one reason I'm excited to join over 50 million players in Fishing Clash who are promoting sustainability and conservation by competing in their virtual events. So download Fishing Clash with me using my link in the descriptions and pinned comment. And maybe I'll catch you on the leaderboard.